Yeah. Okay, apart from uh, genetic methods of looking at this, gene, gene therapy, uh, how else, <laughs> what kind of can we do now? Yeah, so we can also use chemical activators because mm -hmm. there's one way just let's put more protein in. Mm -hmm. uh, another strategy, well, let's use the protein that we already have that our cells are already making and make it more active because mm -hmm. CERT6 is an enzyme. So we can activate it enzymatically. We can potentially also try to trick cells into making more of it. Uh, but mm -hmm. that's kind of a different approach. Or we could increase the activity of, of the enzyme. Uh, we are also exploring it. Uh, and there are several companies that were looking for chemical activators of CERT6. Mm -hmm. uh, so here we had uh, some edge <laughs> because CERT6 is an enzyme. And it has two separate enzymatic activities. Uh, one is called deacetylation, so it removes acetyl group from other proteins. And another one is ribosylation, it adds a ribose group. So there are two activities. Uh, both are important for various cellular functions. Um, but what we showed, uh, it was, I don't remember if we discussed this study last time or not, that in human centenarians, we found a variant of CERT6 uh, that mm -hmm. has ribosylation activity enhanced, but mm -hmm. not just ribosylation. And from this, we concluded that this is the activity we really want to go after because acetylation is important, no question about it. And I believe it's particularly important early on uh, during development when you know genome has to properly function to make uh, a baby mm. <laughs> correctly. <laughs> uh, but during our uh, you know, subsequent life, adult life, um, perhaps ribosylation is what becomes more critical for longevity. Uh, but mm. all of the initial screens for CERT6 activators were focused on deacetylation. And we started looking for activators of ribosylation. So we are doing it right now. We are screening. Mm -hmm. uh, but from the Activators that were discovered previously, mm -hmm. uh, we just tested them because they all were discovered as deacetylation activators. And we thought, okay, let's check. Maybe some of them do both. Maybe some mm -hmm. of them activate both. Uh, and one of them <laughs> did both because most of them really did nothing to, to ribosylation. They were only targeting one activity. That's it. But one was activating both. And that's a very interesting mm -hmm. uh, molecule um, called fucoidin mm -hmm. uh, that is derived from brown seaweed, uh, which is very safe. People eat brown seaweed. It's sort of a staple of uh, Asian cuisine in Japan and South Korea. People consume a lot of brown seaweed in soups and other, <laughs> mm -hmm. other appetizers. Um, and so we got kind of excited because these are countries with highest life expectancies mm -hmm. and uh, they eat a lot of this. Um, and so we really started investigating further the effects of uh, fucoidans from seaweed. Mm. So, right. So I understand that you, that not all the fucoidin works, right? It's quite a complex molecule that can be like different um, That's correct. So fucoidin is kind of a family of molecules, mm. uh, and the, their backbones are similar, but they are not the same in every algae species. Uh, there are differences in, in the structure, how those uh, sugar moieties are organized uh, relative to each other. And uh, we've been testing various isolates uh, of fucoidins, and uh, not every not each one activates sirtuin 6 We found maybe every third <laughs> does. Others, they have no effect. We even had some that uh, inhibit CERT6. Oh. So do, do you know what the kind of mechanism, mechanism of action is? Like why it's different? Well, probably because they have different structures. Right. Uh, and uh, we are trying to figure out why. 
Um, right. We don't know. We don't know this minimal structural unit of Foucauldian that's important. And we are working with sugar chemists right now to identify this structural unit. And I hope that once we succeed, mm -hmm. then we can make a better drug out of this. But right now, uh, we can just eat seaweed. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, so I believe you tried Fucoidin in mice as a as a cert six activator, right? Because as I said, like the previous one was was uh, genetic. So yes, I, yes. Can can you talk a little bit about what you saw with Fucoidin in mice? Yeah, that's that's actually very exciting. Uh, you know, the results exceeded our expectations. We <laughs> uh, started giving Fucoidin to aged mice, uh, sort of middle aged. Uh, mm -hmm. Not very old, but about one and a half year of age. And we just kept them on this supplement and we had control group of mice that didn't receive Fucoidin. Uh, and then we were measuring the frailty scores every month. Uh, we measured the inflammatory cytokines in the blood um, and the physical activity, like you know, the walking speed and grip strength and various mm. parameters and there was clear benefit uh, for mm. the mice uh, taking Foucault and it was very clear it continued um, and then I think an update to our previous conversation uh, mice in Foucault and group actually survived longer so it mm. even had effect on lifespan what kind of dose were you giving them was it something that a person would be able to mimic Yes, it wasn't uh, too high. Well, we basically we started from um, sort of crude preparation of Foucault and it wasn't ultra pure uh, mm -hmm. because um, we wanted it to be kind of similar to what humans would take because you can mm -hmm. make ultra pure Foucault but then the co it would be cost prohibitive. So we took a partially purified kind of crude uh, preparation, not not just ground up seaweed, but, you know, first purification mm. steps, and we were giving it to mice uh, mixed with their chow diet. So it wasn't a huge dose. I think you know, for a human, you know, translating the dose mm. between mouse and human is not linear and kind of <laughs> difficult to say because we are much larger and our, that we have different surface <laughs> to volume ratio. Uh, but I would say approximately four grams of Foucauldin would be similar for, for a person. So for, for do not age, right? Do, do you do you test their Foucauldin? Is, is yes, that... yes. So yeah. we, test, uh, we test their samples to make mm. sure that they activate mm. uh, CERT6 mm. and then, then they call it CERT6 activator. <laughs> right. <laughs> So I saw in one of your papers that, that you talked about the activation of CERT6 requiring fatty acids, or at least being enhanced in the presence of fatty acids, I believe. So first of all, can I, is that correct? And would there be any advantage? Would, would that talk, talk about when you should take um, a CERT6 activator to try and have like fatty acids around at the same time? Yeah, you know, it's an interesting question. We haven't tested it in mice because, yeah, potentially we could try to further um, give them different diets with the fatty acids. Um, so fatty acids, they were shown to activate the acetylation activity. Uh, mm -hmm. We didn't, um, I think we tested it with ribosylation. We didn't see much of an effect. Uh, although I don't know how that would play out in combination with Foucauldin. That's, again, something to try. Right. Uh, so could be tried potentially. You know, <laughs> it's really interesting, but um, it seems that various sort of treatments or diets um, that from um, people believe to be healthy and that there is evidence like color restriction, even not mm. uh, similar uh, intermittent fasting, uh, many of them activate sirtuin 6. <laughs> uh, of course, the effects may be 
quite mild, um, but we see a very interesting relationship that often, well, if we know that these types of fatty acids are good and like other studies show they're good, and then, oh, we find they activate sirtuin-6. So it, sirtuin-6 really seems to be this kind of hub uh, controlling many processes related to aging. And this is why just healthy lifestyle is good. <laughs> um, right. But obviously we want to have stronger effects and this is what we get with uh, with Foucault and SL6 activator. So one of the things SL6 does, I believe, is that it, well, it's part of the, the fixing the transposons is helping package the chromatin. So, so basically, helping with the epigenetics. So mm -hmm. I, I saw you also talked, it would be, said it would be interesting to kind of combine CERT6 with reprogramming, with like Yamanaka factor reprogramming. Um, could you talk a little bit about that? And uh, well, A, is that correct? <laughs> and B, could you talk a little bit about, about how that would work or or is CERT6 working totally differently from the, the Yamanakas in terms of the way that it handles you know, these? It is a difficult question you're asking, and we've been thinking a lot about this, uh, because um, CERT6 is doing something similar in a way that it rejuvenates the epigenome. So our epigenome gets disorganized as we age, and this may be the driver of aging altogether. Uh, but how do we rejuvenate it? Because what Yamanaka factors are doing, they just take everything and kind of completely redo, <laughs> redo it. <laughs> they just bring us back to this um, embryonic form. Um, and that is dangerous intrinsically because when cells lose their identity, they can then turn into cancerous cells. Mm. And this is why people working on the programming, they are uh, working to develop strategies where you do it just a little bit. You, you don't mm -hmm. go all the way. You don't turn our cells into embryonic cells, which would be lethal. Uh, but we just do it just one step, two steps, mm -hmm. but not all the way. Um, uh, what CERT6 is doing here is, you know, similar in a way that it rejuvenates, uh, but it really doesn't change the fate of the cell. It mm -hmm. doesn't even it doesn't even try to do it. So there is no danger of losing cell identity. Um, because with respect to transposons, CERT6 just goes in and uh, recognizes transposons. We don't completely understand how, and uh, condenses them into heterochromatin. It doesn't try to rewire the whole system. Um, so in this way, Yamanaka factors um work you know in a very <laughs> dramatic way <laughs> they yes. just change everything um cert six just comes in and uh, there are some places that loosen up and it tightens <laughs> right so it, it's working in a totally different way um and okay so like combining them may not so combining them yes so to, to the question of combining them um Initially, we thought that, well, perhaps we could try to combine them. We've done some preliminary experiments in that way. And in, in some ways, CERT6 may actually prevent Yamanaka factors from doing what they want to do, because mm -hmm. uh, CERT6 doesn't want to allow the genome to completely rewire. Mm -hmm. um, so in a way, they could be antagonistic to each other. It can, if, if let's say, we wanted to... Um, complete reprogramming to take a cell and turn it into embryonic stem cell. So CERT6 would actually be an impediment to this process because it wouldn't let the whole epigenome to open up and then <laughs> assume new structure. Um, if we only want to do it in partially, so there may be benefit in combining them. So maybe CERT6 would not let the cell reprogram completely, which is not what we want mm. in the case of um, somatic rejuvenation, but maybe it will kind of limit. Uh, so this is something we actually want to study in the future. So that's mm. on our list. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>